you looking to build business credit? In today's video, we are going to be covering some game changing information. So if you are interested in building business credit, make sure to watch this entire series where I am going to be covering all of the important must know information about building business credit with the top business credit reporting companies. Let's get started. Welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is credit coach, Nicole Scott. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe. I have left a couple playlists below in the description for the business credit playlist and the credit repair training playlist. If you're interested in learning more about credit, whether that's personal business, or even starting a credit repair business, join the credit community. There is a link below. And last but not least, I have a new store. So if you are interested in representing your credit repair business, your credit score, make sure to visit creditrepairmerch.com and get your credit t-shirts today. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, if you are interested in building business credit, this is some must know information because you have to know where you want to focus your time based on what type of business you are building business credit for and understand that your personal credit is equally if not more important than your business credit when you are a business that does not have tax returns, does not have financial records. There has to be a few different C's with credit and that is cash flow. So if your business is not cash flowing, you're going to need to have something else that the banks are going to feel confident in lending to. And that's either going to be credit or collateral. Those are the three C's that really matter the most. So when you see a lot of people online showing these huge approvals, quarter million, whatever, just know that most of those places are connecting directly to their bank account, looking at their deposits, looking at their personal credit, analyzing the data that is available to them on the business side. And obviously they would have high limits because this is what they specialize in. Your average person, it's going to vary for that person because every business is different. Every credit report is different. But in today's video, we're going to be going over how you should build business credit. Now, the basics when it comes to business credit, and there's, you know, the basic, 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 basic stuff, right? So the business credit scores and company profiles are very similar to personal credit reports. A lot of this is just data. So as long as we pay our bills on time on the personal side and the business side, we should be good to go, right? That's half of the battle really. So number one on the business side is on time payments. No matter what credit bureau we are referencing to, you have to commit that you will pay all of your accounts on your business side on time. That means that they cannot be one day past the term. Okay. You do not want to take the risk of a vendor or a supplier or somebody for that matter, reporting that you were one day late. So I recommend that you set up auto pay for the minimum amount due on the business and personal side for any vendor, supplier, whatever, right? Whatever credit obligations and credit contract agreements that you are part of, you agree to, whether that's on the personal side or the business side. But there are some important differences when it comes to business credit versus personal credit. We can get away with a lot more on the business side. The personal side, there's, you know, a lot of components. And if you're interested about personal credit, I've left a playlist below that really spells out that for you. But personal credit is really just, you know, references of established credit that we have shown a history for paying our contractual agreements as agreed. With personal credit, we don't get a late payment reported until we are 30 days past the due date. But of course there's fees and all that stuff. We just don't want to do that, right? So personal credit is very simple. You're just looking at Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion on the personal side. Well, guess what? most of these companies have a business side to them. So when we talk about Experian, we're talking about the same Experian on the personal side. So guess what? 
they have all of our personal data already, right? Equifax, Equifax on the personal side, Equifax on the business side. Again, they have all of our data there. They don't even need our social security number. They just need our name, our address, our birthday. They get public records. So a lot of this is all data, uh, not to mention LexisNexis. They are a huge business reporting company and there's Paynet and SBFE. So we're going to be going over, and of course, how can I forget Dun & Bradstreet, right? Dun & Bradstreet, Dun & Bradstreet. So we're going to be going over all of those today and really who you should be focusing your time on based on what you want to do. Now, if you are a business that is going to be doing something with SAM.gov, you're definitely going to need to make sure that you build up your Dun & Bradstreet profile. All of the data on the Dun & Bradstreet profile is correct. And in order for you to validate your sams.gov account, you actually need a real business location. A lot of those virtual addresses just aren't going to fly these days. So if I were you, I would definitely join our community to find out how you can go about getting addresses that are with actual real businesses so you can get verified and validated with not only Dun & Bradstreet, but with Sam.gov and look really good on paper like you are in a real brick and mortar location. There's not another business, maybe you know a few businesses there, but there's not a hundred different businesses getting mailed to that one address. And that one address only has what, like three offices inside of it at most. So a lot of these companies are listed as mail receiving companies at the USPS website. And if you're unfamiliar on how to do that, that's a whole nother video. I've left a playlist below and you can check it out because you definitely want to get yourself educated. But the personal side, you know, there's FICO, there's Vantage, and really, you know, we all kind of know you can build up some positive trade lines. The more positive trade lines that you have, the better. You want to have six to 10, right? So next we have business credit scores. And this is really gets interesting because we want to leverage our personal credit on our business side, right? But we want to set up our personal credit so it looks good and it looks like we have a lot of trusted financial banking trade lines on our credit report and they're not over leveraged. So I like to set up a lot of credit cards on the personal side so we can get credit cards on the business side. Now, keep in mind, we don't want to over leverage or really leverage our personal credit cards too much because when you're going to apply for business credit, if it looks like you're over leveraging your personal credit, I talked to someone recently, they had, you know, a bunch of different credit cards, like 10 different credit cards, but they were all low limits, all under 2,500 bucks. And guess what? They were all like pretty much maxed out. So that's never a good look. And that's how, you know, these credit cards on the personal side can keep you down and keep your credit score low. Whenever we're going after business funding, business credit, however you want to call it, and it requires a personal guarantee, which pretty much any bank or financial institution out there is going to require a personal guarantee from a credit partner of the business. It doesn't have to be the owner, but it could be a credit partner. And you can find someone that can personally guarantee for the business that does have good credit or a family member. But personal credit is going to be required if the business is not able to stand on its own two feet. Now, funny enough, this picture here with American Express, American Express is one of those banks that primarily uses personal credit to approve you. So they look at Experian, they want at least a 700 credit score with Experian. They like to see that you've had a credit card established, you know, for at least 12 to 24 months. You have at least one credit card that has a $2,500 limit. And as far as the business goes, you've been in business for two years and really that's it. Now, American Express is one of those banks along with a ton other like Bank of America that are members of the SBFE and therefore they get data from the SBFE. And we're going to go over how important that is. So basically you just have to make sure that you are doing what you need to do as a business, doing right, right? Paying your bills on time, paying your suppliers, paying your vendors, whatever business 
contracts you enter to, it's important that you fulfill those, right? Or get them corrected somehow because it's really hard to correct business credit once you have late payments or negative items reported to your business credit. It's not as easy as personal credit. Personal credit is pretty easy to clean up if you ask me. And with business credit, it's a lot more challenging. Now, here's a fun fact for you. There are more national credit bureaus that are for the business than there are for consumer credit bureaus. Now, there are a ton of consumer third-party data companies. They just share data, right? But as far as credit reporting, there are more business credit reporting agencies than there are for consumers. So that's why it's so important for us to just make sure that we are on our P's and Q's. We are making sure every I is dotted, every T is crossed. We mean business. You can't come to play. Okay. This is where the big boys play. You have to make sure that you're responsible and that you have your finances in check. You don't want to pay your invoices too soon when you're trying to build business credit, but you also don't want to pay them anything past the term. So if you are going to be mailing a check or doing something that could take a few extra days to process, make sure that you account for that. Okay. I always try to encourage everyone to pay the invoices five business days prior to the due date to ensure they receive the payment and they process it before that due date, okay? Now let's talk about business credit trade lines. Not every business credit trade line is going to report to every credit bureau on the business side, and that's why it's so tricky. Oftentimes on the personal side, a lot of these credit cards and loans and lines of credit, anything pretty much we get on the personal side, it's going to usually report to at least, you know, two bureaus and most of the time three bureaus, depending depending on what company it's with, right? But most of the time, if you get a major credit card with a major bank, it reports to all three credit bureaus on the personal side. Well, it's very different on the business side because say I go in to get an American Express business credit card. If I were to get that on the personal side, report to all three personal credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. But on the business side, it actually doesn't report to anyone. So they are a member of SBFE, so they share data with them, but it's a great card because it doesn't really report. And to be honest with you, a lot of these business credit cards are not necessarily going to report. Some do and some don't, right? But that's the beauty of it. A lot of business credit cards like Chase and American Express, they usually aren't going to show on your business credit reports. So that's kind of a good thing and a bad thing, right? So it's easy to get because it's, you know, using your personal credit or using someone's good personal credit to leverage business funding. But at the same time, it doesn't necessarily help you build business credit. It's not going to report to your personal credit or someone's personal credit unless the account was defaulted, right? But on the business side, there's actually two different types of of trade lines, just like the personal side, the personal side, there's revolving and installment. Well, on the business side, they're still revolving and there's still installment, but there's another one, which is actually called vendor trade lines. These are what you would consider your net thirties, net sixties, net nineties. These are suppliers and vendors, term accounts, and then there are also financial trade lines. Now, if you are going to be building business credit and you are a new business, it can be challenging to get real financial trade lines that are going to report onto the business side. So a lot of people start with vendor trade lines, Quill, Granger, you know, a lot of those net 30 accounts. But honestly, that's just setting yourself up to buy a bunch of stuff that you really don't need. So if I were you, I would try to build credit with places like credit strong because that is going to be a real financial trade line that will report to all of the major business bureaus and help you build 
more, I would say, comparable credit to probably what you're looking for. If you're looking just to build a bunch of vendor and supplier accounts, and of course, that's great if you are a company that uses a lot of supplies, a lot of, you know, things that you might need from a supplier, then that would be a great thing to build up your Dun & Bradstreet. Because Dun & Bradstreet is one of those companies or one of those bureaus, I should say, that primarily focus on the business vendors. And to be honest, when I finally figured figured that out, I was like, man, this kind of sucks, right? And that's why I do this information because I don't want you guys to make the same mistakes that I did. So again, if you haven't liked the video, make sure to give me a huge thumbs up and make sure that you have subscribed to the channel and check out the additional links and information in the description. So bottom line is there's financial trade lines and there's vendor trade lines. We want to go after financial trade lines because those are going to be the comparable credit that we actually actually want because a lot of people are looking to build business credit to get, you know, business auto loans, business credit cards, business lines of credit, business loans, you know, SBA loans to be able to buy property. Somebody recently signed up for coaching with me and then was informed by a realtor that he was not able to buy property in his business name. I was like, no, you can't buy it like a residential home with a, you know, traditional mortgage with your business. No, but you can purchase property with business funding. I've seen so many people do it with simple lines of credit and business credit cards. Now, obviously there's very unique ways of doing that. But for those of you that have cash flow in your business, you have financial records, you have a business plan, you can go to the SBA and get the 7A loan and be able to purchase property to be able to operate your business. So you can purchase the property that you plan to operate your business out of, or you can buy another space to operate your business out of. So that is a very unique way. And a lot of people own group homes, they own shelters, they own different, you know, residential properties that would require you to purchase that property with your business to be able to operate your business. So yes, two different types of vendor accounts. And a lot of people don't really understand this. So I really want you guys to, you know, understand that building business credit can be very simple. You don't need to get a bunch of stuff that you don't necessarily need. You're just trying to like, oh my God, I need to build business credit. So I need to buy all this crap that I really don't need. No, you don't need to do that. Okay. You can get gas cards. You can get, you know, credit strong it can be a little pricey, but you can also find places that have things that you actually need, right? Not a bunch of net 30 accounts like you know, and that's all the tier one stuff. And you really only need about three to five tier one items just to kind of get you kick started and get your business credit reports developed, get that data out there and get some on-time payments start flowing. And you can do that as early as like three, maybe even four months old as a business. And you know, that's the most challenging is being a brand new business. If you have had some time in business, which I always tell people, start your business before you need it. You know, you can create your own shelf companies, put it on ice and then use it once it turns two years old, three years old, whatever you need. So back to the basics here, some business credit bureaus collect financial trade lines. Some only collect vendor trade lines. So that's a big thing that a lot of people don't understand. And some combine both, right? So all business credit bureaus combine additional information about companies with trade lines to collect and generate a business credit score and assessment, basically a report card of your business. And some business credit bureaus will also incorporate the owner's information like Experian. Okay. So that's why it's so important to understand you have to have good personal credit and you have to have good business credit. The financials go hand in hand. If you don't have good personal credit, we need to work on that. Yes, it can take time, especially if there's been a lot of damage that has been done over the years, but you have to start somewhere. Okay. We have to start somewhere. So that's why it's so important. And whenever someone comes to me and is like, Hey, I have bad credit, but I want to start building my business credit. Okay, great. But just know we are limited and that's why it's so important to work on both at the same time. So that is really important for everyone to understand. And a lot of people ask me which 
trade line is going to be best for me. And honestly, guys, it's really dependent on what kind of business you have and what your goals are. If you have a company and say it's a janitorial company and or you have a contract with the government and you need to buy a lot of parts or supplies or things from a vendor or a supplier, right? That obviously you're going to need a lot of net 30, net 60, net 90 so you can get net 90 terms with that company. So that means you don't have to pay your invoice until 90 days past the time time that you received your goods, basically. So 90 days from the date that they invoiced you, which usually is around the time that you receive your goods. It could be a little bit earlier, but net 30 is 30 days. Net 60 is 60 days, net 90, 90 days. So, um, and that's usually with suppliers, right? And it's not like you can just make a payment until your account is paid off. You have to pay whatever balance you have in full within 30 days of the time that they invoiced you, which can come pretty quickly. So sometimes it can be challenging for businesses that are waiting for payments from other people. So that's why it's better to be able to get better terms, longer terms in that case. Uh, so you want to have strong business credit just to show that your track record to pay on time is immaculate. That way they feel more comfortable working with you. Now, if your goal is to get a business auto loan, business lines of credit, SBA loans, any sort of real money, funding, credit, financials, you're going to want and need to have financial services trade lines on your credit report to show comparable credit. That is really, really important, guys. What makes you think if you go to a bank tomorrow, right? You don't have a strong personal credit, but you don't really have any business credit whatsoever, right? Do you honestly think that they're going to give you any sort of funding? Now, if you have strong income, like you are grossing 20 to $50,000 a month. Sure. That can override that kind of stuff. Easy. No problem. Again, you got to have one of those other C's cash flow or collateral. So what is it for you? Do you have cash flow? Do you have collateral or do you have credit? Right? Most people don't have cash flow, don't have, they do, but not enough. Right. And especially if they're a newer business under five years, usually their cash flow is not over $50,000 as a small business owner, right? So when we are dealing with small businesses, because there is a difference between small business credit and commercial credit. That's another thing a lot of people don't realize. Commercial credit, small business credit, very different. All right, guys, well, we're going to take a break for part one, but come back for part two, and I'm going to leave the entire playlist below, and we're going to get into the nitty gritty of each of these business credit bureaus, what you need to do to build up your business credit with with those entities and so much more. Thanks for sticking around. Make sure you have subscribed to the channel and we'll talk soon.